Holy Quran tells us in the Surah Al Tawbah, and I quote, and if any one of the disbelievers seeks your protection, then grant him protection so that he may hear the word of God and then escort him to where he will be secure. End of quote. As the Holy Quran tells us in the Surah Al Tawbah, and I quote, and if any one of the disbelievers seeks your protection, then grant him protection so that he may hear the word of God and then escort him to where he will be secure. End of quote. Ashab al Jalala wa al Fakama wa Sumu, Kadal dual Arabia, Mali al Amin al Am, Askur kum lidauti lil Udur, Beina kum alio. Uno prendere i pesci. Eh, ma tu sai che l'evangelizzazione non sempre è sinonimo di prendere i pesci. Eh, eh, andare a prendere il largo dare testimonianza e poi il Signore Lui prende i pesci quando, come, dove noi non lo sappiamo e questo è molto importante e anche partire di quello che noi siamo strumenti strumenti inutili l'altra cosa che tu hai detto che c'era nella domanda quella preoccupazione che tu hai espresso, che è la preoccupazione di tutti voi.
UK uh, is leaving the EU but is not leaving Europe, we're not leaving the world stage. Uh, our presence on the world stage uh, is in many uh, ways uh, represented here uh, at the Security Council where we were a permanent member of the Security Council before we joined the EU, we've been a permanent member of the Security Council as a member of the EU and we will continue to be a permanent member of the Security Council after we leave the EU. Um, what practical effect does the triggering of Article 50 have? And after the two years, well, that will depend on, the, on how the negotiation goes. But I would expect that, the, uh, that you will not be seeing a, a sudden change in the British interest. You, not be, you will not be seeing a sudden change in British values. You will not be seeing a sudden change in the British position uh, on many or most of the issues uh, which come before the Security Council and indeed other parts of the United Nations. The UK will continue to be a permanent member of the Security Council and a leading player on international development, human rights and everything else that the United Nations does. In the shadow of St Paul's, as the to and fro with Brussels on Brexit begins in earnest, European bankers, part of the fabric of Britain's financial services industry, now facing personally the kind of uncertainty they deal with daily on the markets. Do you feel that your lives, to a certain extent, are on hold for the next two years because of Brexit? The answer is yes. I was planning to probably think of buying a house, just put on hold. It's, I mean, it's too risky right now to commit to something so big. And maybe in six months from now we'll have to move, or in one year. And again, we work in a bank, so our basically job <laughs> depends on what's going to happen. There are three million EU citizens in the UK, many of them drawn to the capital, and 1.2 million Brits in Europe. Hard for them not to feel, whatever the politicians say, like they're bargaining chips in what promises to be painful political negotiations. Away from the square miles, bright lights and big salaries, London's high streets have a subtle flavour of the communities that live there, like here in Stockwell's Little Portugal, a Portuguese community with deep roots, unsure what will happen next. It's Asaranas where you go for a bit of home from home in London, run by Maria Candida and her family. I'm here uh, 23 years, you know. I got my shop and I bought my house. And sometimes I ask myself, what's happened when the Brexit and when the London came out with the euro? This Lithuanian couple here for 15 years, Britain as much a part of their identity now as their country of birth, and with a pretty sober view on how negotiations will go. 15 years it was like, you know, we've been working here and building our lives here, so it's uh, probably it formed us as persons as we are, and, you know, we, we, we kind of, you know, we are, in a way, British, but now we feel kind of, you know, alienated somehow. I don't think it's possible to make everyone happy in this situation. It will be um, impossible to achieve that. We seek to guarantee the rights of EU citizens who are already living in Britain and the rights of British nationals in other member states as early as we can. That is set out very clearly in the letter as an early priority. An early priority and a sea of priorities as the clock ticks down on Brexit. Diana Magne, CNN, London. The leaders of the Senate Intelligence Committee vowing to answer this fundamental question. Did the Trump campaign coordinate with the Russians to meddle in the elections? From what you have seen so far, can you definitively rule out that there was no coordination whatsoever between Trump officials and Russian officials during the election? I know we would be crazy to try to draw conclusions from where we are in the investigation. I think Mark and I have uh, committed to let this process go through before we uh, form any opinions. And I would hope that that's what you would like us to do. As much as we'd like to share minute by minute, even the snapshots we get as a, as a team going through it are not always accurate when we find the next piece of intelligence. So let us get a little deeper into this before you ask us to write the conclusions. Uh, that's clearly something we intend to do down the road. And refusing to rule out if there are any direct links between Russia and the president. And we won't take a snapshot in time and uh, make any observations on it. But 
we know that our challenge is to answer that question for the American people in our conclusions to this investigation. The committee plans to interview 20 witnesses, including Jared Kushner, President Trump's son-in-law, as well as other Trump associates, and suggesting that Michael Flynn, the former Trump national security advisor, could face questions over his contacts with the Russian ambassador that led to his firing. I think it's safe to say that we have had conversations with a lot of people. And uh, you would think less of us if, if General Flynn wasn't in that list. The Senate leader saying the panel will go wherever the intelligence leads. The staff has been provided an unprecedented amount of documents. Those documents include documents that up to this point have only been shared with the Gang of Eight and staff directors on the House and Senate side. The Senate probe gaining more prominence now that the House investigation is in gridlock. At least one House Republican has lost confidence. My, my sense is right now that the House is in a situation where there's it, the issues become overly politicized. They're kind of getting into a, a stalemate position, a bit paralyzed. The Senate is moving on a better trajectory, and I, I think we're going to have to rely on the Senate for a report on this uh, Russian meddling in the election. Introducing the new Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Both are bigger than the previous models and they have curved screens that flow onto the sides. Say goodbye to the Samsung Galaxy's home button and hello to an infinity display. The S8 will also be the first phone to feature Bixby, Samsung's new AI assistant. The company insists Bixby is fundamentally different than Apple's Siri or Amazon's Alexa. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. Samsung plans to make Bixby available on all of its appliances, from air conditioners to TVs. More features include facial recognition to unlock the phone, the ability to submerge it in up to five feet of water for 30 minutes, and an iris scanner. Samsung has a lot to prove. Exploding phones prompted a global recall of the Galaxy Note 7S. Samsung blamed the batteries. The recall wiped out billions in profits and hurt the brand. Only time and sales will tell on how the public receives the new Galaxy 8. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney.
علی لیریم نخست وزیر ترکیه پایان عملیات فراد در شمال سوریه را اعلام کرد و میگوید اگر نیاز به عملیات دیگری باشد از عنوان جدیدی استفاده خواهیم کرد دویست و دوازده روز حضور ارتش ترکیه در سوریه که البته مهمترین اهدافش جلوگیری از تشکیل یک منطقه کامل خود مختار کری در شمال سوریه و عقب راندن داعش از مرزهای جنوبی ترکیه بود این عملیات هفت ماه با پشتیبانی ارتش ترکیه از نیروهای مخالف سوری موسوم به ارتش آزاد با آزادسازی شهر جرابلس آغاز و تا پاکسازی شهر الباب ادامه یافت یلیری میگوید این عملیات موفق بوده است ترکیه میل دارد در عملیات رقه هم بازیگر بزرگی باشد اما همکاری آمریکا با کوردهای سوری در این عملیات با مخالفت ترکیه همراه شده روزنامه حریت هم این خبر را باستاب داده روزنامه ملیت از اعتراض ترکیه به امریکا و روسیه می نویسد و به آنها نسبت به ادامه همکاری با نیروهای کرد یپگه هشدار می دهد اما روز گذشته شورای امنیت ملی ترکیه جلسه ای را برگزار کرد در این جلسه چند تصمیم مهم گرفته شد که اغلب آنها بازخوردهای منطقه ای و فرامنطقه ای دارند از جمله همین اعلام پایان عملیات فرات دوم اینکه ترکیه در این جلسه روابطش را با اتحادیه اروپا مورد بررسی قرار داد و پیرامون اینکه این کشور چه تدابیری را در آینده در قبال اتحادیه اروپا اتخاذ کند شور و مشورت شده در این جلسه همچنین تصمیم بر این گرفته شد که با اتمام عملیات فرات روند بازگشت آوارگان سوری به کشورشان فراهم شود نسب پرچم اقلیم کردستان عراق در شهر کرکوک واکنش اعتراضی ترکیه را به همراه داشته مقامات این کشور از نخست وزیر تا وزیر خارجه این اقدام را اشتباه و به نوعی در جهت تغییر بافت قومیتی منطقه می دانند. ترکیه از ترکمنهای ساکن در شمال عراق همواره حمایت می کرده و این اقدام را نادیده گرفتن حقوق ترکمنها در این مناطق می داند. روزنامه ترکیه هم تظاهرات اعتراضی ترکمنهای عراق در این باره را باستاب داده و از قول معترضان می نویسد کرکوک ترکمن بوده و ترکمن باقی خواهد ماند جمهوریت روزنامه منتقد دولت هم اشاره دارد به دستگیری مدیر هالک بانک ترکیه در امریکا و می نویسد اسرار هالک بانک در پرونده های اف بی آی محمد هاکان آتیلا مدیر بازداشت شده هالک بانک ترکیه هم روز گذشته بیانیه ای صادر کرده و گفته اخبار منتشر شده پیرامون او واقعی نیست و به زودی افکار عمومی را در جریان جزئیات این موضوع قرار خواهد داد اما خانم زهرا دوان روزنامه نگار و نقاش کرد از سوی دادگاه استان مارین به سه سال زندان محکوم شده آن هم بابت کشیدن نقاشی که از دید دادگاه تصویر کردن عملیات نظامی عنوان شده خانم دوان میگوید این نقاشی را رو از روی یکی از تصاویر واقعی از ساختمان های شهر نوسیبن کشیده که سال گذشته در عملیات ارتش ترکیه ویران شده بودند تصویری که پرچم ترکیه بر روی این ساختمان ها را نشان میدهد و از دید زهرا دوان مسئول این ویرانی ها ارتش است